SellerAmp is the backbone of Amazon product research. I use it every single day in my Amazon business where the past few years I've done millions in sales, but there are certain SellerAmp features you probably aren't using, but should be that I know can help you find a lot more winning products in less time. So in this video, I'm going to share with you five hidden SellerAmp features you probably aren't using, but should be. So the first seller amp feature is actually a really simple one that I just don't see a lot of people taking advantage of right here. So if we initially plug in a buy cost on seller amp right here, we can see $30 profit, 33% ROI right here. But what you always need to understand is that the first cost you plug in on seller amp is almost never going to be the cost you actually pay. And that's because there's so many different discounts that make the numbers work on these different websites. Something I really like to say is like, you don't really find items good. You make items good by taking advantage of these different discounts here. So say I have like a 10% email code or say it's a retailer that accepts a sales tax permit or say it's Mother's Day, Memorial Day or Father's Day and there's a really good sale going on right here that can get us an additional discount. I need to make sure I plug that in here, but I don't want to have to do a mental math. So what's a lot easier that we added to seller end is that you can just go ahead and take off, you know, 10% here or say, you know, you need to add in a little bit of a cost rate or for shipping or whatever. You can add in 3% or you can add in, you know, a dollar per unit or you can take off, you know, a 15% code right here and then subtract out your sales tax well if it's a you know resale certificate website that takes tax exempt right here and you can go ahead and calculate that and it makes it a lot easier just using that math feature with its seller amp to be significantly more efficient and then in terms of those different discounts right really you know you got to understand is that every website has one or two tips and tricks that create those discounts that's something if you join my coach program i just plug you into so i do want to let you know if you want personalized one-on-one -on -one help directly from me you can take a look at the link in the description for my private coaching program application where i help amazon sellers just like you start or grow their Amazon is the right way in 2025. Let's take a look at the next hidden seller amp feature. The next one, guys, is actually going to be going in on selleramp.com and hitting the drop down menu and going to settings right here to have your settings correct. Now, a ton of people have this completely off. I want to make sure you guys all have it dialed in here. So, the first thing is making sure you have your inbound FBA shipping here. So, this is an estimated cost that gets added automatically to the profit calculator when you have it in here that calculates your shipping to Amazon. You might be thinking, okay, what about the shipment from the supplier to you, the website to you? Pretty much in every case, that's going to be free or you just count in your per unit cost here but inbound fba shipping obviously costs money it's going to tend to cost around like 80 cents per pound when you're a beginner and then go down over time right there your first couple of shipments might be a little bit more because you're not doing full perfect boxes over time you get really efficient there so make sure you have your inbound fba shipping cost plugged in right there as well as i also recommend plugging in and selecting all of these here there's a couple that aren't automatically on your account specifically the offer summary right here which is going to help you tell if a product can be merchant fulfilled or not. So once you have show offer summary selected right here, it's gonna display over on your seller amp right here, right here where it says offer summary right there. We can see the total offer count as well as how many FBA sellers there are, as well as how many FBM sellers there are. And if it's a listing that has all FBA sellers right here, you're probably not gonna be able to merge fill and you're pretty much certainly not gonna be able to merge fill it right there. But if you can see there's other people on this making money FBM and sell at FBM, they're not doing it for no reason. They're on this listing because they're making money on it right here. So the offer summary is really helpful. A good rule of thumb to know if you can merch fulfill something is typically if 20% plus of the sellers are merch filled on a specific product. But if there's insane volume on something and there's you know 50 sellers and five of them are merch filled, they're probably still making money merch filled. But on a standard, not crazy volume listing right here, you want to make sure 20% of the sellers plus our merch filled sellers right here. So you want to make sure these guys are all selected. And then the next one guys is going to be, this is something I see so many people get wrong here is going to be making sure you have your prep fee, misc fee and misc fee percent correct. So for most of you guys watching this that are complete beginners here, you do not need to put anything for prep fee or for misc fee right here. So make sure you go ahead and update that. And then your misc fee percent should be the sales tax rate for your specific state. So there's two ways you can go ahead and do this guys. You can just put in zero here and then manually add in sales tax to your buy cost each time or you can plug in the exact sales tax rate for your specific state say you live in texas here and you just go ahead and plug in 8.25 percent and now the buy cost you put in the calculator here should not include sales tax because it's already factored in on the back end from the seller amp settings there so two choices you can either put in zero here and then add in 8.25 percent or whatever your specific sales tax rate is for your state manually in the buy cost just adding plus 8.25 percent or whatever is for your state 
or you can add in the sales tax right here and then don't include it when you add it on the buy cost because it's automatically included right there. A ton of you guys watching this are accidentally doing sales tax both ways, or you just have like a random like $5 misc fee in here, which completely messes this up. So make sure you have this correct. It's going to save you a ton of time with Brock Research here. So most people prep fee should be zero because you're not using a prep center yet. Eventually when you use a prep center, if it's in a sales tax free state, you plug in the per unit prep fee right here. Say you do like $1.50 per unit and then just plug in 0.00, .00 if it's a sales tax free state and zero for the miss fee right there. But the vast majority of you guys should be zero, 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 and then the specific sales tax rate for your state right there. And that's really important that you go ahead and get those set up here, guys. It's very, very helpful. And it's just screwing over a lot of your product research without even knowing if you're accidentally counting sales tax twice. The next is items that are significantly more profitable FBM compared to FBA. And a lot of you guys are accidentally doing this wrong too as well. So a lot of you think in order to calculate the merchant fill numbers on a specific product, you just take a look at the prof calculator calculator right here and subtract out FBM shipping from this number right here, the profit. That's not true whatsoever. What you actually need to do here, guys, is scroll down here on SellerAmp and actually toggle over to Merchant Fulfilled right here so we can actually plug in the Merch Fill numbers and get the exact net Merch Filled profit here. So when you initially toggle over to FBM, a lot of you guys think that's the profit, but it's not. You actually have to plug in the shipping cost for the FBM cost right here as well, which if you go to howtofbm.com, it's a free Google Doc I got for you guys you can actually pull these estimated FBM shipping costs right here. So take a quick screenshot of that and make sure you go ahead and implement that that has the weights and the corresponding shipping numbers here. So if I scroll up to the quick info on seller amp here, I can see the weight of the specific product is eight ounces right here. So it's going to ship for like, yeah, five bucks, right? So if I go down here and plug in $5 shipping, we can see right here, that makes it a 46% ROI FBM and it's only a 38% ROI FBA. There's so many examples of items that are more profitable FBM compared to FBA, but you don't know that if you don't actually plug in the numbers. So make sure you go ahead and toggle down to FBM, and then actually plug in that FBM cost right there, which you can take a quick screenshot of this so you know it forever. If we take a look at this product right here, we can see it's buy box in for $34 right here, right? But if we take a look over on the brand website, it's going for $24 right here. So we plug in $24 here and see that's just about break even here. But if I take a look here, I can see there's also a 20% code as well. So if we take off this 20% code, now we have the profit margin on that specific product here. But we can see on this specific item, it was actually a lot lower recently and it's been buy box in like the 32 range here. So unfortunately, that's actually not quite there where we want to be consistently here. So it's really important that you take a look on Keepa and see where the buy box is actually going consistently here. But if we take a look historically on this product, we can actually see that for a good bit of the year, it was actually really profitable. So even though it looks profitable today, it's not consistently there because we can see it's going lower a lot more often. But over the year, it has actually been really consistently profitable over time. And so many beginners all the time will see items that are not quite there, but they're pretty close or they're really profitable and they're just out of stock and they just keep it moving and just scroll away from those products. What makes a lot more sense, guys, is to just use the one-click export feature in SellerAmp and add this to an almost good spreadsheet using the SellerAmp Google Sheets one-click export. And now this listing goes into the spreadsheet here and we can add it in and say, good item when it's consistently at 35 plus with 20% code. And now we can come back to this item in the future when we see that it becomes better, just taking a look at the spreadsheet once a week, once a month, having a virtual assistant do it right here. But make sure you're not leaving leads that actually are good behind just by being lazy and not tracking them over time. The seller on Google Sheets is incredibly helpful. Another really underrated feature, guys, is going to be using the buy box analysis on SellerAmp. So if we take a look at this item, we can see it's buy box and at $37. We can pick it up over on JCPenney's for only 16 There's only one left in stock, but you get the idea here, right? So we can see this is a nice profitable product here. But I can see if we take a look at the buy box in this item, it's actually a merchant fulfilled seller in the buy box. And when I see a merchant fulfilled seller in the buy box, I'm thinking, okay, I can price above that FBA. But how do I actually know if I can, right? And the reason on that is because the prime bump, basically when you sell an item FBA, it has quicker expected delivery dates to the customer. So Amazon incentivizes FBA and algorithm more. 
and they get more in fees when you do FBA because you don't have to pay the individual shipping costs. You do pay those FBA fees. Meanwhile, with FBM, it's the opposite. You avoid the FBA fees, but you do pay the individual shipping costs like we just took a look at here. So the way you actually see if you can price higher FBA is using what's called the buy box analysis feature on Selleram down here at the bottom where we can see who's getting buy box at what price and how frequently here. And we can literally see if we take a look at last one here we can filter to that clicking that we can see that literally in the last hour someone's buy boxed at 39 right here so we can see guys if we plug in 39 on this prod compared to 37 here that's some serious extra roi that we get on that but you don't get without that attention to detail to take a look at the buy box analysis and see that here so that's really helpful at the bottom to see who's getting buy box at what price it's not just selling at the current price you see in the buy box you need to see if there's folks selling higher and if there are you can go ahead and test out those higher prices and get some extra profit out of the same items. So make sure you guys implement these hidden seller and features again to help you find a lot more winning products fast. And if you want personalized one-on-one -on -one help directly from me starting or growing your Amazon business in 2025, make sure you take a look at the link in the description for my coaching program application. Subscribe for more and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.